What is up guys? Welcome to another pottery video. I'm John the Potter. Great to have you here. Today's video, we're talking about brand new straw cups. So I've made these for uh, the last few weeks and they have proven to be very popular, especially this design with the handle. You make them really big so they can fit a bunch of water and then you put a little hole in there so you can throw a straw. And then you have a super cool water cup that you're drinking. This is probably like 30 ounces of water. Uh, it fits in cup holders. You can throw it in the dishwasher and it's unique. It's awesome. It's a piece of art that you can use every day and that's what we're all about here. Before we get started on the design of the straw cup, I wanna let you know we have a massive restock happening for our June collection. So June 2nd, we have so many pots going up for sale. These new 4th of July red, white, and blue collection is going up. We have soda fired pots, we have gas fired pots, cone 10, we have electric fired pots. It's gonna be, dare I say, maybe the biggest restock we have ever had. Definitely a super diverse one. Lots of these new straw cups that we're gonna be talking about in this video. Okay, and I started making them first with no handle, right? So it's just like a cup, and then you fold in that clay, put a hole in there, and then you can throw a straw in there and it's perfect. Because for some reason, drinking out of straws is just slightly more enjoyable than drinking from a cup, sometimes. Uh, but then I started putting a handle after seeing some other popular designs that may or may not be made out of ceramic. Uh, and I thought, you know what, that would be really cool in clay and with glaze on it. Uh, you can, and then you can throw it in the dishwasher because sometimes if they're made of, say, metal, you wouldn't want to throw it in the dishwasher. And then we just went crazy with it, made some left-handed ones, uh, went bigger and bigger and bigger. We're gonna throw some of these on the wheel. Uh, I'll talk about them and then you can go make them on your own if you're ready for that. All right, let's do it. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is start with some clay. So this is B clay from Continental Clay. I like to start for these cups anywhere from two pounds to two and a half pounds. If you want it even bigger, you go three pounds, which is a lot. Like a normal 16 ounce mug is only gonna be about one pound. So this is two to three times bigger than that. Okay, so that's a little too much. That's like four pounds. I'm gonna go two and a half pounds for this one right here. And my guess would be that that would hold at least 30 some ounces. You know, 32 ounces is kind of the goal. And then for these, typically I don't wedge anything that's under like two pounds, but you gotta wake that clay up, get it nice and homogenized so it's all consistent throughout. Maybe 30 seconds. And we're gonna hop on the wheel. We're gonna go at a little different angle this time so you can see my hands and my fingers better instead of the straight on angle like I normally do. So this is a little bit bigger piece of clay so it takes a little bit more skill First thing we're gonna do is center that clay, right? Gonna cone up, which I'm just using the edges of my hands to push in really hard to go up, starting from the bottom, and then I'll go down from the top, like that. Sometimes I just cone up once, but for this project, I'll cone up twice, and then push it down. So now we got it nice and centered. And then for this project, since we want the base to be fairly skinny so that it fits in a cup holder, right? We basically want the shape to go skinny and then go out a little bit at the top so that it can start to fit more liquid in it. So I'm not gonna pull it out too far. Like if I was doing a bowl or a plate or something with a wider base, even a mug that's a wider base, I'd pull it out more, but I'm gonna keep it pretty skinny. And then the first pull, I always try and get it to be a little bit of a cone shape. So wider here than, even though later when we get to finishing this piece, the shape will basically be opposite of this. It's just nice to start with that shape because it gives you a lot of flexibility. Okay, so that was pull number one. Now I'm gonna go pull number two. And again, now I'm just thinking about trying to get a really consistent wall all the way up okay so now we have a pretty consistent wall all the way up i don't want it any skinnier up at the top here i'm always and now i'm just trying to get more weight up from the bottom so when i'm doing these last few pulls i'm kind of thinking about the final shape 
So now I have pretty much the clay in a spot where I want it. I could maybe get a little bit more weight up from here. Although I don't want to go too far or else the clay will get too thin. But basically I'll just do one more little pull here at the bottom and then I'll finish it off with like a starting to make that shape that I'm going to refine later with a metal rib. And right there I'm not even doing anything right now. I'm not even bringing any clay up from the top. So you can see I kind of made that final shape that we're going to have and then now I'll go back and refine it with this metal rib. And push it in to just make sure that we stay nice and skinny so that we can fit in any cup holder. And then I'll flip the rib around and start to refine the top part. A little bit. Just like that. So that would be good right there, you know? And then you can kind of refine it and do more if you want. If you want to make the top a little wider, that's fine. If you want to make it, you know, I've made a bunch of different shapes of this. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold the part in for the straw. So then we're basically doing almost like a reverse spout. So I'm just putting two fingers on the inside, one finger on the outside, pushing in and doing that. And it's really easy to do. You can let it dry a little bit and then do it and it's probably slightly better that way. Uh, just because if you have any une unevenness or thinness throughout, then you have issues there. But that's basically it for the first part of this project. We'll take this off to the side, let it dry, and then we'll come back and put that hole in there. So now after this cup has dried for a few hours, we will put the hole in there. We're just taking uh, one of these tools, the hole punch tool, lining it up right there, and then doing that. And the only thing that needs to be done is just needs to be cleaned up with a sponge or something because sometimes there'll be a little sharp edge right there. Then we will wire it off the bat and flip it over so that it can dry evenly. Then we'll come back, trim that, and then put a handle on it right there. All right, so then the last step in the process would obviously be glazing. So after it gets trimmed, then it dries out for a few days, gets fired to cone 04, and then it comes out and it's ready for glaze like this. So all these were pots that we had made a few weeks ago in that shape that are ready for glaze. All right, so that is how we make these brand new straw cups. If you want any, we have a bunch going up in the restock. They're perfect for summer beverages, whether it's water or a cocktail or anything. So check it out June 2nd at 6 p.m. on Etsy. It's gonna be very interesting restock to see. Soda fired, gas fired, straw cups, 4th of July collection. What will do well? I don't know, I'm interested to see. Check it out. All right, thanks for joining me in this video. We'll see you in the next one.